Hello and a big warm welcome to you. My name is Marion Rose and I am so delighted today to be having a conversation with Aletha Salter, PhD, about the publication of her new book called Healing Your Traumatized Child. But before I do that, well, welcome Aletha. <laughs> Thank you. Glad to be talking with you about this new book. Oh, me too. I think it's amazing. Yeah. I'd love to introduce both of us before we go in any deeper. So um, I am a level two aware parenting instructor and the regional coordinator in aware parenting for Australia and New Zealand. And I've been honoured to be an aware parenting instructor for 17 years ish now and practicing it for 20. And I want to really appreciate you, Aletha, for this amazing body of work and to, for actually adding to it with this new book. And for anyone who doesn't know Aletha yet, Aletha Salter, PhD, you are the founder of the Aware Parenting Institute. You've published, you have six books published, um, translated into many, many languages, and you're the founder of the Aware Parenting Institute, and you have certified Aware Parenting instructors all over the world, many, many who are also sharing your beautiful work with the world. So just congratulations on this amazing book. I think it's incredible. Thank you. Thank you. So um, we can both show. I'll show. Show actually. Maybe oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, because um. I'll show it. Because you'll be. We show up on yours. Yay! Healing your trauma. Healing child. your traumatized child. Parents' um, guide to children's natural recovery processes. That's the subtitle. Yay. So I'm I'm on my second read now, and I've underlined just so much of it and starred it, and I just think it's an incredible book, and I recommend it to every single parent, even if you don't think your child's experienced trauma. I know I love how you talk about mini trauma in this book, Aletha, and I think that's a really helpful term to understand that however much we aim to protect our children, that all children will experience stressful and traumatic events, even mini traumas in their lives. But yeah, I would, I would love to hear what what called you to write the book, Kalita. Okay, there's many reasons why I decided to write this book. Um, first of all, there's a, there are a lot of traumatized children in the world, right? And it's not it's not getting any better. <laughs> there's there's a, continually new forms of trauma, you know. Now it's now it's natural disasters and forest fires and floods and hurricanes, terrorist attacks in schools. Uh, so another reason is that, um, so it's, it's basically primarily for parents, you know, what they can do at home to help their children. And I think there, there's, a, there's a big misunderstanding about how children, uh, first of all, how trauma affects children, and secondly, how, how they can heal, how they can recover. And they're born knowing how to recover. We just need to allow certain things to happen, to facilitate facilitate the process. So that's um, that's the main reason, really, to help parents understand their children and understand some of the, the ways that children's behavior gets misinterpreted. Yes, it's such a, you know, such a gift how you explain that in the book is to really you know, how how so many of the common behaviors in childhood that parents really um, you know can react to and see as you know, misbehavior where actually their, their, uh, their attempts for a child to actually heal from stress or trauma or their symptoms of the, the trauma that they've experienced that is, um, is in their body still. So I love as well, in the, yeah. in the back of the book, you have a, a summary of all the major um, elements of, of the book. And um, I think you're wanting to share more about that. It's a beautiful, um, the summary of the major points. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I just want to go back to what you said about oh, sorry. The, the, misunder the misunderstandings too. Yeah. I mean, that's so. It's there's there's really two kinds of misunderstandings. I want to emphasize this. Um, one is how children react to them, what, what their sim what their post traumatic symptoms are, uh, and that's that's all based on the neurobiology of trauma. And this book has has um, a whole chapter on the neurobiology of trauma which I did not include in my other book. So that's one difference um, between this book and my other book. And so these, these symptoms, the children's behaviors, if they're, if they're suffering from unhealed trauma, are driven by their, what's going on in their bodies, you know, chemically, neurologically. Um, and so those behaviors get misunderstood. And then when they attempt to heal, there's another layer of misunderstanding often. 
because of the just lack of information about the healing process and how children heal. So there's there's misunderstanding on several levels. Um, Yes, and I think that information piece is so important, isn't it, for parents to really actually understand what's really going on, you know, what's really going on in children's bodies, what what do they mm-hmm. experience as traumatic, what's actually happening, and this beautiful natural healing process that you describe, and what's actually required uh, from parents to actually really facilitate that process. Yes, yes, exactly. So with a little information, parents can be really effective I'm not going to say that these kinds of therapists, but the effective helpers, facilitators, you know, when the children are, are going through the healing process. Um, so, yeah, and another major point is that um, what many people don't realize, and this is another misunderstanding, what many people don't realize is that healing from trauma is it's a very active process, you know. Uh, I've, I've heard people say, well, just, you know, calm down. I mean, some of the symptoms of trauma are uh, aggressive behavior, hitting and biting, um, being agitated, impulsive, uh, all those kinds of very, sometimes very disagreeable behaviors. And, uh, you know, parents sometimes feel they just have to tell their kids, just calm down. You know, just calm down, calm down, you know. But their children's biology doesn't allow them to calm down. <laughs> and so, and healing from trauma is very different from just calming down. Okay. They calm down eventually after they've gone through the healing processes, but you can't <laughs> aim directly for calming down. And then the other misunderstanding that parents sometimes, or this was you know, a long time ago, and still now, some people, many people think that. Well, just don't talk about it and they'll forget about it. They'll get over it, you know, with time. Um, it doesn't work that way with trauma, unfortunately. You know, we don't get over trauma. It doesn't just wear off. It just, it, it's with us. It lingers in our bodies and our nervous system. And, and we need to really confront it and actively heal. So that's another important point. Yes. And I love how you describe really clearly exactly how parents can support that process and actually how we often uh, prevent that happening just through really not understanding what's going on. And uh, again, you know, giving yeah. information yeah. clarity about what we can do to actually support these natural healing mechanisms that, that all babies and children are born with, that we're all born with. Yes, yes. Yes. And then another kind of behavior, you know, that I mentioned hitting, biting and all that, you know, impulsive, agitated behavior, but there's another kind of behavior that um, it's parent doesn't bother parents as much, but it's when children become very calm and quiet and kind of, you know, disconnected and attentive maybe. And this, these are children who may be in a state called dissociation. And that's, if those children don't get the help they need, they're, they're, they're still going to suffer from from trauma so that is another um post-traumatic you know reaction to trauma to unhealed trauma um and so those two are misunderstood or or some parents just think oh that my child is quiet uh (laughs) shy uh and and that it may be that that child is would be you know, a little more outgoing if they can heal from trauma. They may be, I'm not saying that all quiet children are suffering from trauma, but it's another possible indication of unhealed trauma. Yes, I really love how clearly you describe those two different states, the hyperarousal and the dissociation and what parents can look for to see whether that might be happening. And as you say, that that um, dissociation as well, it's often so much more socially acceptable, isn't it? You know, a child who wants to read the book hour for hours a day is often, you know, it's seen as a very valuable thing rather than, you know, again, actually, you know, maybe that is just meeting their needs, but actually maybe it is that they're, that they're mildly dissociating from feelings. Yeah, especially if they're disconnecting and isolating themselves. Uh, that can be a bit worrisome. Yes, yeah. 
but but so easily overlooked so again just yeah. I love the, the clarity with which you support parents to really actually understand what is going on for their child and how they can help and I and I love what you say about parents actually being able to help their own children I think that's what's so often unique about aware parenting to see that parents have so much power to help children heal from stress and trauma and daily just daily overwhelming events you know that was so powerful Absolutely. because children children make attempts to heal during everyday life. They make attempts to recover. And that's what I'm trying to help parents recognize. The child is um, you know, hitting or maybe that, you know, it's an attempt to heal or cheating at a game. Maybe there's some feelings there that need to be healed. Or, and then, and children bring up a lot of um, trauma through play. And that's, that's another aspect of, of the, uh, their attempts to heal that, that um, it helps parents when they can recognize those forms of play that attempts to heal rather than just maybe a waste of time or irritating behaviors. Oh, you want to play doctor for the 10th day in a row? You know, I'm bored with this. But maybe that child needs to heal from um, um, is using the symbolic play of playing doctor to heal from a uh, traumatic medical experience. Yeah. yeah. I think that's it's, that's part of the important information. Yes, I mean, it's so empowering for parents to really understand what a difference that, that they can make in their parents in their child's everyday life and long term emotional well being. Isn't it to see it really can make a huge difference. Yes. Yes. yes, yes. I love too that you really differentiated the difference in um, healing in childhood compared to healing from trauma as an adult and. You know, particularly in terms of just that children having a lot less <laughs> um, yeah. feelings than adults. Yeah. yeah, most of us adults, where we have, we have several layers of, of um, you know, trauma. And so a new trauma gets, you know, further as, you know, impacts our nervous system that might already be overwhelmed. That with, with young children, they they really don't have layers of unhealed trauma. And so uh, they can heal more quickly. They can heal more quickly than adults. That's one big difference. Yes. And I love that in the case studies that you present at the back is seeing for, for some of those children, it's sometimes it's even just, you know, a few, you know, a, a few daily uh, episodes of play, playing being a dentist, for example, that actually can make it. Yeah. Yeah healing can happen I mean, sometimes of course it takes years and you know lots of crying as well but sometimes a little bit of play can can just be enough for the healing to happen absolutely absolutely it can be very quick, very quick. yes mm -hmm. and and um and that you mentioned many traumas i think we mustn't underestimate you know the the broken toys the lost toys the the friend that leaves town, those are many traumas and, and they, they all need to be healed. Um, so there's big trauma, like, you know, basically major accidents and injuries, sexual abuse, and, you know, surviving a hurricane, <laughs> surviving a terrorist attack. And then there's many traumas, which uh, are, um, a part of every child's life so I mean if you know I don't want parents to think oh I don't need this my child hasn't been traumatized well just maybe a bee sting or you know something like that it, it's a, it's a, that's a trauma yeah. yes and I know you know I'm sure we all know many many people like I'm thinking of a friend who's um daughter in her 20s has um, a phobia of dogs still and I remember she had that as a oh. child and thinking you know the power to actually support children in healing from these whilst they're still children now, I know for myself not starting this healing process to uh, until an adult that it really does make a huge difference for children you talk about this as well in terms of you know some of the the layers that get added on the top there when we don't um, manage to support children uh, to heal from stress or trauma whilst they are still in their childhood Yes, yes, it's really helping children have a much easier life. You know, if they can heal from trauma while they're still children, right, soon after it happens, they'll have a much easier life. Yes. They'll have more attention for learning, and, they'll, you know, it, everything goes better, they'll behave better. <laughs> um, 
you know, we can help them heal soon after these traumas happen. Yes. And I love how you give that whole list of, you know, how children look if they have healed from, from trauma soon after they happen. And, you know, again, this, this deep misunderstanding in our culture of what is normal child behavior compared to actually most of it being symptoms of uh, unhealed stress and trauma. So you know, I really love how you, I'm sorry about the birds, supporting <laughs> parents to really understand and see children. Uh-huh actually what's really going on for them when they are sucking their thumb or or hitting their brother actually to, to understand or yeah. Yeah. and to understand or crying yeah or, or, crying. or crying as well as you yeah, say you know, part of the healing process yes do you want yes. to talk a little bit more about crying and and raging or well, is there yeah. crying and raging are definitely part of the healing process there's two main i mean there's several aspects of the healing process one is cry and laughter it's crying and raging and also Included in all of those are our are, are body movements, which I have emphasized more in this book than in my other books, the importance of body movements um, to empower children to actually actually um, transform their memories of trauma. I talk quite a bit in this book about memory and transforming memories that they can. So the basic principle, just in a nutshell, is revisiting the trauma, sometimes through play, and then, and then reacting to it as we would have, as they would have needed to react, moving their bodies as they would have needed to move them, and then that can actually transform their memory of the trauma. So that's the whole book in a nutshell, <laughs> the whole approach. And uh, the memory, the memory of trauma will be associated with mastery, power, and recovery, instead of with terror or rage. Yes. Mm, I've got tingles hearing you say that. And and we yeah. all do that for our children, don't we? Instead of carrying all that unhealed terror and rage that sitting, can sit in their bodies for decades. Yeah, actually, yeah absolutely. To give them that sense of mastery and power that they've gone through that experience. But they've gone through that whole um, homeostatic process to come out the other side, as you say. And to That's right. a really different yeah. experience. So mm, is there anything else that you want to include about this book? Um. I think just that I, it's not, I'm not trying to re, um, replace, parents cannot replace professional therapists. I want to make that clear. There are times when children do need professional therapy. My goal is not to put them out of business. We de- desperately need trauma-informed child therapists. Uh, and that can, but, but having said that, parents can still do a lot at home to help their children. Yes. Yeah. Mm, well thank you so much for writing Hello. i know there's going to be just thousands and thousands of thousands of parents but also their children who are going to ex- experience the benefit of, of all your um many decades of deep research and practice in in this area and and all, all the love and care that you've put into this book so thank you so very much for thank, you. thank you for talking with me about it my pleasure yeah.